So, hello, welcome back to another episode of the self development Tactics Podcast. Yes, I am standing. Yes, I, I do hope that the audio is fine. I do not really know if it is going to be, but I at least hope. As you can see on the left side of the screen, we're going to go through some Reddit things once again. Um, and yeah, you know, this is a pre-recorded episode because I do not think that I'm going to be able to record tomorrow or at least going to have the energy to do so. Um, possibility of course but I don't know if I would rather just do something different or do something else yeah um, let's see this guy has reached a new level of stoicism and he doesn't even know or care I don't know who this is and there's no com well, there, there, there are some comments so let's actually see what this is all about can you explain how this is related to stoicism please note that separate rules require posts to be relevant to the philosophy Kids don't do drugs. <laughs> and there's a quote, apparently. I got nothing else to do except deal with stuff. Has now entered my library of daily phrases. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you know, you indeed can get a ton of information or motivation or inspiration uh, of, of new things to say from uh, things that you might have watched. You know, anime, for example. Non-scary chapter books to read to a three-year-old at bad time. Aren't there so many? Like all the children's books? Or am I just totally wrong here? I actually really don't know. Stoicism Buddha blah 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 Today I learned in the original ending to Pretty Woman, Richard Garry's character throws Julia Roberts' character out of his limo like a limo, yeah, limo, in a dirty alley and tosses 3,000 on top of her. It's starting to pay off. For years, and especially during quarantine, I've been treating myself like shit and letting depression kick my ass. At certain points, I had abandoned all hygiene and had even stopped showering and brushing my teeth. A couple of weeks ago, I was getting uh, dressed for a doctor's appointment, and when I looked in the mirror, I saw this disgusting bum looking back at me. I realized how far into the shitty into the shit I'm sorry it fallen and decided to do something about it. I brushed my teeth for the first time in weeks, took a shower for the first time in weeks, got a haircut and bought new clothes. I started a skincare routine and even began to clean up all of the junk around me. Something that I always see uh, for me and in my flat and uh, with myself is that I feel horrible when there's shit around and I, uh, and I do feel kind of overwhelmed then when when there's just you know stuff everywhere and 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 clothes everywhere and, and dirty law uh, dirty dishes and whatnot and i hate that i hate that feeling and it is of course a part of of things that could build up you know depressive episodes just feeling bad feeling overwhelmed and whatnot this is totally going to be a part of it and this is totally going to be just adding to to all the the other th feelings that might come up and um this is also one of the reasons why when i'm tidying up things and or reorganizing things i'm quite always trying to set up new systems and set up new systems that work for me in a way that that i am then going to be able to um do things with way less effort just because i i hate doing all the stuff you know it's, it's just way easy for me to just uh, you know put something down somewhere and, and i'm then fine with it of course in the moment but this is not going to be uh, forever the thing is it makes sense then to have systems to have well organization systems that makes it easier for you to stick to it being clean all the time at least to some degree um you know this is one of the reasons why i'm i'm having a drawer quote unquote or just a place in my in my closet where I could, in theory, throw all the, the you know, semi-dirty laundry in. It is tidied up, you know, it is in my fucking closet and I'm fine with that. Like, it is a way I'm not seeing it, it's not disturbing me or whatnot, but it is also not laying around everywhere in my fucking flat, you know. On the other hand, um, just organizing things, for example, my, my gym equipment, you know, I actually built a box out of fucking cardboard, that fits all the things that I normally need every single day. You know, my, my weights, bands, whatever it might be. And I can throw these things into it and it looks tidied up. You know, but before I just, you know, have thrown it on the, on the fucking floor and it looks shitty. But 
um, it really makes sense to figure out a way uh, in which you could just make, make things way more efficient for you and way easier for you to sustain things as well. Uh, something that I am actually always trying to do. I obviously am not succeeding all the time. I still need to figure out a way in which I, I can deal with dirty dishes. You know, they are, you know, they, they really piss me off. You know, they are quite everywhere. But, uh, and also, um, I don't know, like when everything feels like a drag and you really do not want to do it, setting up systems to, to treat yourself also makes sense, you know, like, like just really making yourself do whatever the fuck you should be doing or want yourself to be doing. Anyway, I joined the great resignation to become an entrepreneur. Okay. Uh, trying Swiss design, I know it is not perfect, but I'm working on it. So any suggestions? Yes. No, body should be doing this. Uh, I don't know what it's really called in English. I just know it in German. But um, having justified text like this, where you can indeed see some gaps in the text, unless it is purposefully done, is not nice. Also, having uh, the characters or the letters of, of each word being spaced out like enormously is also not nice. It just just look great, you know, have, um, you know, no gaps, no um, unnecessarily big spaces in between letters and so on and so forth. But um, there's always the possibility to make it a feature out of a bug, you know, but this should also be represented in the whole design then. And I'm just trying to see whether this is meant with, you know, this there or whatnot, but, but yeah, also thinking about physics in design, which might mean that this one is a bit too thick, I guess. You know, it, it kind of seems odd. And there is always a reason why things seem odd, you know. And I think that this is indeed something that we all can see. You know, when something is nice and visually pleasing, everyone can see that, you know, and everyone can notice that. Most people do not really understand why and couldn't explain why certain things are visually pleasing but I at my point of view we all have a sense for that not necessarily always the vocabulary to describe it or to explain it but we can see that and when something is off we also can see that you know most often I also don't know why uh, even though I will call myself a designer I see yeah you know the thing I like grids I think using grids can be great, but it could also just unnecessarily uh, restricting yourself from actually doing great design. Also, when you're just not, not sticking to it for whatever reason, like why this and why is this bigger than that? And yeah, you know, it's, it's, you know, if you're having a grid and when you're using a grid, it should also make sense and you should also be using it all the time. Maybe this is, yeah, apparently this is the Fibonacci kind of ratio thingy thing anyway. Why is self-love so hard to maintain? I recently woke up from this spiral of trying to chase someone in order to receive love, completely forgetting the promise I had to love myself and put myself first. Why is it so hard to stick with self-love in times of loneliness? It seems like when you don't have self-love, people don't want to love you anyway. So how do you just sit with yourself and lean into that self-love? Um, this kind of ties into something that I had to think about. And um, at this point in time, I, I really am struggling mentally uh, with feeling well and, and being well off. I do have some support structures, uh, meaning friends, but I do not really often um, take advantage of that kind of consciously. You know, I just don't want to bother people, even though it, it wouldn't be the case. But I just, I don't know, I think that there's also something to it when you're dealing with it yourself and when you're able to solve it for yourself. I think that should be cautiously applied, this quote-unquote technique or this strategy, because obviously, you know, there's people that could help you, therapists and so on and so forth. And there is a reason why they are there, because often it is the case that you are not able to get out of this rut by yourself and therefore it is also nice and 
I would certainly appreciate it for you to then stick to some more traditional ways of dealing with these things. But the thing is, um, when you're depressed, you know, and um, for example, you might be depressed because you are not uh, having a loved one, you know, you're not in a love relationship. The thing is, if you are really, really, really mentally down, the chances of you, first of all, getting to know another person, and second of all, connecting with this person, they are immensely low, you know, because the energy that you're going to send out, the way you're going to maybe act, the way you're going to uh, deal with things is just going to be off. It's just going to be good. It's just not going to be, gonna be uh, favorable in terms of you getting into a relationship with a person. And this is something I had to think about and, and I was thinking about as well as uh, when you are depressed and when you are feeling bad, the chances of you actually doing something that is gonna, uh, well, that is definitely not gonna help you with that feeling and with that thing that you're having to deal with, they are pretty big, you know? We, we then often uh, judge things in a wrong way, we do things in a wrong way, we do just things that are wrong for solving this problem, as it for example is, and I actually wanted to, to hit on that for this episode as well, listening to negative music and sad music, watching sad movies, and so on and so forth. Like, I, I don't want to say that you should completely cut out all drama and, and whatnot. Like, sometimes it's just great, and these series are great, and, and so on. But, um, you know, why would you actually make it even worse for yourself? Even if I, you know, do understand that you might be gravitating towards these things a bit more in these times. But, you know, it is just human judgment that is completely off and completely fucked. And I'm seeing this so often myself and, um, you know, actually, you know, bouncing back and forth with feeling great and then feeling shitty and whatnot. Um... <laughs> Yeah. But coming back to the question, why is self-love so hard to maintain? You know, because it is effort. And that takes effort is hard to sustain and or maintain. It might be about the strategy one is using, the technique that one is using that makes it hard to maintain. Um, might just be you you know for some people maintaining something whatever it might be is just harder than for somebody else i don't know um let's actually see what people are saying it's conditional it is hard to maintain but if it's unconditional it is spontaneous to feel it starts with acceptance and forgiveness you need to internalize that even on your worst days you'll forgive yourself even if your worst state you'll accept who you are you know the thing is and this is as well something that I had to think about. Um, tomorrow I'm going to have to work. And I really don't want to work. You know, it's a ten and a half hour fucking shift. I don't want to do that. I kind of need to because I need the money simply, you know. But I need to be doing it. Period. It is something that I need to be doing. So on one hand, I could be fine with it. And just try to make the best out of it or on the other hand i could just complain and and just you know be stupid about it the day is gonna come i'm gonna have to do it no matter what you know no matter how how much i hate it no matter how much i i want to have it differently it is just gonna be the case this day is gonna come tomorrow is gonna come tomorrow is gonna be there you know i can't just you know there, there might be some ways in which i could um i don't know kind of ditch that thing you know, but uh, like one can always choose either you are trying to make the best out of it since you can't change the situation anyway, it is out of my control, I can't do anything about it, but I can change the opinion about it, my attitude towards these things and so on and so forth, like really going back to stoicism indeed and uh, yeah, you know, <laughs> what should I be doing? Besides trying to do the best out of it and make the best out of it and trust, you know, try to feel good about it. It's going to be one day, one day um, of the week. It's going to be fine. You know what, what, what should happen? 
you know, often the mind is just going crazy about things and, and lying to you about things and that make things way more difficult and way harder and way um, uglier than they really are. I love myself for the target. I have to work on myself and attempt to become better, but I don't necessarily love everything that I'm that I am and do. That is how I would recommend thinking about it. That is really a great way to think about it. It's loving yourself for the journey rather than the destination. You guys think that if you change into something better, you'll finally be able to love yourself. Terribly sad and you don't understand at all the meaning of love. You know, the thing is, no matter in which way I'm going to change, I'm always going to be stuck with my mind. You know, if I was 10 pounds bigger in terms of muscle mass, if I was just looking a bit better, but me being me, this is the problem. Me having my mind, this is the problem. It's not about anything else. It is about everything that's inside of me. Of course, certain things from the outside can change things in the inside and might lower things, might uh, make things more insignificant. Uh, you know, as I'm just, you know, for example, thinking about uh, having a love relationship, you know, of course, this can make things better, but in the end, you are going to be you and you are going to deal with things as you deal with things and um, this is something to work on not necessarily things that are outside things that are you know just materialistic as well of course they can influence you but essentially you're gonna be you essentially this is maybe just gonna emphasize certain sides that you're having certain ways of being that you're having inside of you might just be triggering these things, these ways of being, of acting, of whatever it might be about. But it's not, it's not going to change you. Not really. Unless something, you know, outside is going to make you intrinsically motivated or intrinsically changed, you know, which could also happen. In the end, it is really difficult, I would say. But I'm going to end the episode there. I do hope that I've been able to cover some things that were of value and I'm going to see you the next time. So, bye-bye.